New egg right now. For a 64GB kit, 2 sticks, you have to pay a crazy amount. I still remember when 64GB of RAM used to cost around $200. I bought my two 32GB sticks for $300, literally 3 weeks ago. And honestly, I can call myself lucky because I did it right before the spike. And let's be honest, before all of this, nobody really cared about RAM. It was that boring spec you spent maybe 10% of your budget on. It wasn't the main character of your PC. You just treated RAM like meh. But now the situation has changed and suddenly everyone is apologizing to RAM for not taking it seriously. It's finally RAM's time to shine. But jokes aside, today I want to explain in the simplest way possible what's actually going on. Who's buying RAM in massive volumes and why is this happening? I'd recommend you stay calm. And no, this isn't because I already bought RAM. I'm putting myself in your position and I'll share facts that might actually give you some hope in the middle of all this crazy news. Now, let's get started. Before we go any further, let's slow down and actually understand what's happening right now. Some people say RAM prices will keep going up, others say AI is just a bubble that's about to pop, but when you look at everything together, it's really hard to see the full picture. That's why let me make it clear for you. At the center of all this is DRAM, what we usually just call RAM. And it's everywhere. Laptops, consoles, phones, even cars. Sounds crazy, right? I never thought Michael Schumacher would struggle because of DDR5 Kingston Fury. But to be serious, it's most likely about electric cars. Now, to be honest, there's not only DRAM, there are also other types of memory, including LPDDR, GDDR, and HBM. These are used for different roles and completely different purposes. For example, DRAM is for our ordinary PCs, LPDDR is our phones and tablets so you can at least launch them, GDDR is for GPUs, and the last one is HBM, which is intended for servers, supercomputers, and similar systems. I highly recommend remembering this name because this memory is the real star right now and the one creating all this chaos. You might say, alright, but how does this affect our beloved DRAM? Well, even though these are different types of memory, the manufacturers are basically only three big companies, SK Hynix, Samsung, and Micron. Together, Together they account for more than 90% of total RAM market in the world. Imagine the scale. Now to explain the situation clearly, have you noticed the crazy rise of AI over the last 3 years? I know you have, unless you've been living isolated in the forests of Canada. It started with ChatGPT. Do you know ChatGPT? I love ChatGPT. I love it. ChatGPT is... And now every company repeats the word AI a hundred times in every presentation. AI, 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 generative AI, generative AI, 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 AI. And yeah, it's going crazy. In just three years, AI can generate videos, create images, and help you do almost everything in the world. Except illegal things unless you ask properly. Investors saw this rapid rise and started pouring huge amounts of money into AI companies like OpenAI, Google, Meta, and many others. Of course, those companies saw the opportunity and started developing their AI even more. But the smarter AI became, the more people started using it, which led to slower performance over time. Companies noticed this and rushed to build new data centers for AI. And you know what comes next. They needed massive amounts of RAM for those data centers. That's where HBM comes in. HBM stands for High Bandwidth with memory. It's still DRAM just stacked on top of GPUs. It's extremely fast and extremely expensive. Because of the huge demand for HBM, those same three companies that produced RAM for ordinary gamers started focusing more on HBM for AI companies. That shift reduced production of regular consumer RAM. Demand stayed high, supply dropped, and prices went up. You might ask, why not supply both AI companies and regular consumers at the same time? The answer is wafers. Memory is produced from wafers, and one wafer can only become one type of memory. If a wafer is used for HBM, it cannot become DDR5, LPDDR5X, or GDDR6. So as AI companies started buying massive amounts of HBM, wafers were redirected away from consumer RAM. And because of the shortage, RAM prices went through the roof. And honestly, from the manufacturer's side, this move makes total sense. Why? If you're a memory company, you basically have two options. On one side, you have gamers and regular PC users, retail stores, discounts, sales, Black Friday, thin margins, and unpredictable demand. On the other side, you have AI companies and data centers. They come with massive contracts, guaranteed volumes, long-term deals, and way more money on the table. So obviously, they follow the money. It's not that consumer RAM disappeared overnight or got banned. It did 
didn't. It just stopped being the priority. And that's exactly why prices look the way they do right now. And that's why DDR5 prices right now just feel insane. Kits that were totally normal priced a few months ago are suddenly costing money that feel closer to a GPU than a supporting PC part. Yeah, you can still find deals, but they're rare, random, and honestly un unreliable. This isn't some seasonal fluctuation or a wait until Black Friday situation anymore. And here is where it gets a bit worrying. There are two kinds of RAM prices. Spot prices are raw memory chips being traded short term, and those usually spike when there's panic. Then there are contract prices, which are long term deals for laptops, servers, and OEMs, and those are usually stable. The problem is that both are going up at the same time. When that happens, it basically means nobody has spare supply. Everyone is competing for the same memory, and there's no safe segment anymore. Even older RAM like DDR3 and DDR4 is getting more expensive, which honestly shouldn't be happening at all. All tech is supposed to get cheaper over time, not more expensive. But production is being cut faster than demand is fading, so prices are going up instead of down. But you guys aren't ready for what I'm about to say. As all of this situation kept getting worse over time, Micron, one of the big three, made a big decision that made everything even worse. To be clear, Micron also produces chips and its own consumer RAM brand called Crucial. We know that brand very well, and it's one of the leading RAM brands on the market. But in the end, Micron decided to exit the consumer market completely and focus only on HBM. Because it gives them better profit, they basically said that we're done, you're on your own. Of course, they didn't say it exactly like that. What they said was that AI-driven growth in data centers has led to a surge in demand for memory and storage. And Micron made the difficult decision to exit the crucial consumer business to improve supply and support for larger strategic consumers and faster growing segments. They will continue shipping crucial RAM until February 2026 and they are out. And now what? Well, you should be ready for another price jump. Because in practice, we'll be left with only two competitors on the market. Samsung and SK Hynix, and I bet they will increase prices using that advantage, especially when demand elsewhere is stronger. And if you think they are not as harsh as Micron, that's a big mistake. Samsung has shifted DRAM production, but not to consumer RAM like you might think. They're focusing on DDR5 RDIMMs, which are server memory sticks, not consumer DIMMs. These offer massive margins. Contract pricing for high-capacity DDR5 RDIMMs has climbed to levels that make them more profitable than HBM, without the same technical risk or certification hurdles. From Samsung's perspective, allocating wafers to server DDR5 is far more profitable than discounted HBM or consumer DDR5. SK Hynix has announced that they will ramp up DRAM production, but again, it's mainly focused on AI and enterprise consumers. Very little of it will likely go to PC gamers, because that simply isn't profitable. So now the picture is clear. All three giants are producing more memory, but not for us. It's all going to AI and enterprise. That's also decent news, because in enterprise, there are Nvidia and AMD, and and that doesn't automatically mean a GPU shortage is coming, but it also doesn't mean we are safe. And that brings us to the big question, what happens next? And all of this leads to an even bigger problem, one that keeps growing. OEMs already know what's coming, and they're slowly preparing consumers for it. According to some sources, Dell is planning double-digit PC price increases. Lenovo has warned that current quotes won't last, and HP openly said that if memory conditions don't improve, the second half of 2026 could bring even higher system prices. This isn't even Reddit speculation, this is manufacturers quietly telling you that pieces are about to get more expensive. So, what do we do now? Should you start hoarding RAM sticks and flipping them for a profit? No, that's not the point. Honestly, nobody can say for sure what will happen even next year. But experts usually point to two possible ways this situation could be solved. The first option is building new DRAM factories and massively expanding production so AI data centers and regular consumers can both be supplied. That sounds logical and it will probably happen at some point. Prices would eventually normalize. But the problem is time and money. These factories cost billions and take years to build. Even if everything starts now, the RAM shortage might not fully end until around 2026. That's a long wait, especially when you remember the GPU shortage in 2021 lasted only about a year and a half. The second option people talk about is an AI bubble. Some believe AI is overhyped, that investment through AI will slow down, and memory manufacturers will return to focusing on consumer RAM. It sounds possible, but it's far from guaranteed. Crypto really was a bubble and when it burst, GP prices crushed. But AI is different, the idea has existed for decades and it's clearly here to stay. Does that mean PC gaming is dead? And no, this doesn't mean PC building is dead, not even close. PCs aren't just for games, entire industries 
depend on them. Businesses, servers, workstations, cars, phones, everything uses RAM. The idea that consumer RAM will never matter again just isn't true. What will actually happen is something we've seen many times in history. AI will most likely stay, but companies will learn how to optimize it so it uses less memory. Infrastructure will get smarter, investments will slow down, the chaos will calm. That's how every new technology works. First comes hype and disruption, then optimization and balance. Then, what to do exactly in your case, if you don't have a PC or you were about to build it before this chaos? For now, don't expect prices to magically drop tomorrow, or even next year. Real relief probably won't come until late 2027. As ordinary consumer, all we can really do is wait. We don't control factories or investments. But in the long run, consumers always win. Every company depends on us. Even AI companies wouldn't exist without users. If nobody uses their products, nothing works. Time fixes everything. Thanks for watching and take care.